It's Thursday, guys, April 9th, and I am here to share some more from the book of John. And this one is titled, Jesus Washes the Feet of His Friends. And it says, John chapter 13, verse 1 through 17. It says this, Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during the supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, do not wash my feet only, but also wash my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who, who has bathed does not need to be washed, except for the feet but it's entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, he had put on his robe and had returned to the table. He said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are no greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed to do them. This passage is very special to me. Because it's kind of, it, it is the epitome, the, the culmination of, of why I call us Nexus family. And why I, I push so hard for us being a family that is communicating together and is a part of, of most of the decision making that happens within our, our church. This building that I'm in, this, this time, this everything that's going on from what equipment we, we buy to the, the color of, of different things, the, the simple mundane decisions that we sometimes make that keep our family moving and operating. The reason I send those things out publicly, whether it's in our, 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 our uh, we have a, a members only Facebook group. So I post a lot of information there if you're listening to this and you're not certain what I'm talking about. But the reason why I post information there, I post it in our messenger group or in a text message and I say, hey everyone, I'd love to get your thoughts. What is it you think about this? Uh, do you think this is a wise decision or this isn't a wise decision? How do you feel about this? Why don't you like this? Or do you, we, I try to be very intentional about being very transparent about the decisions of the church and allow us as the church family to be the ones that guide that decision. Now I, as the person who is called the lead pastor of the church, many of you have given me the authority and permission in your life to make just make decisions. And because I know I have that honor and, and, and privilege and gift from you guys, I choose not to exercise that. I, I choose to instead put that back in the hands of our family so that all of us feel as equals, all of us are equal parts of the body. Um, and, and this is one of the passages as to why I feel so passionately about that. Because we, we are, we are, we are, the disciples themselves are called to, be, be, to stand as equals. And I don't ever want to get into a place where I don't feel humbled, where I don't feel equal to every single member of our family, regardless of whether they've been with us for one Sunday or they've been with us for, for years. This is a time where I need everyone 
everyone that's a member of the family to not be waiting on me. You don't, you don't need me to meet. You don't need me to have a conference call, to, to connect together. Each and every one of you have the ability and the authority as members of the Nexus family to connect with each other. We're under, we're under a shelter warning right now. We can't all be together. We, we, can't, we, we aren't able to do all the things that we love to do that put us into the same place. But one of the things that warms my heart is when I see members taking initiative saying, hey, anyone want to anyone wanna chat? Anyone, anyone want to go? How's, how's everyone doing? Is there anything I can pray for? Messages like that, that are members going out of their way to check on each other, to connect with each other. That is what I'm, I'm encouraging you guys to do in this season. Each and every one of us that calls Nexus their home, we each have the responsibility to connect with each other. And if you're, you're feeling like, you know what, I don't feel that connected. I, I don't really, you know, people don't message me, people don't talk to me. My challenge to you is then you message them. You send messages out. You, you try to get momentum going. All of us can do this together. This is a team effort. And in order for us to get through this season, I need all of the Nexus family moving with us. So I hope you guys are doing well. This has been our uh, message for Thursday. And I hope to find you well. Be blessed.